I'm glad you brought up the, uh, the unusual way of encountering uh, Solouette and sign spinning. I mean, sign spinning is probably the most uh, unorthodox way I could have ever encountered the work of Solowit. Right. Um, I never would have guessed it. And the fact that uh, we're under the same roof because we chose two different paths is interesting to me. Mm -hmm. So if I encountered Solowit by means of sign spinning, I was wondering what your first encounter with Solowit was and how that impacted you. Oh, wow. That's, I'd have really have to go back and think. Um, my first encounters with, well, I, 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 at this point, one, he's such a towering figure in you know, contemporary art that I probably couldn't locate the first time that I saw a Lewitt insofar as there are a number of his pieces in public spaces, yeah. right? And, um, but I mean, consciously, consciously in, 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 in Chicago, a, a first real gallery encounter, well, it probably would have been in a museum, probably would have been a wall drawing yeah. of some sort. Um, but then the structures, so the kind of modular cube pieces and there were two dealers in Chicago, uh, uh, Rona Hoffman and, and Donald Young. Um, and I think at one point they were uh, business partners, so Hoffman Young, uh, but one of the few artists, and then when they split, I think one of the few artists that they continued to share was Saul LeWitt. So seeing Saul LeWitt either at Rona's gallery or at Donald Young's when I was, I mean, 20, 20, 20 21, 22, but I would have seen his work certainly. In, um, in museums before that, before that time. But it wasn't, uh, would I have known of the sentences on conceptual art, that would come later. So yeah. I think if this was your encounter with Saul Lewitt, yeah. you, you came in, I don't know what door this is, this is not the front door. This is not a door. This is like you came in through the window. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, not, it's like, and not, you know, the window, you came in through like the attic window, right? Yeah. The window at the top. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. So it was a beautiful way to encounter the wit, mm. right? Through, through, through sentences on conceptual art. It's, uh, that is, that is how I, <laughs> I first encountered it, you know, with, working with Yumi on, on this project, you know, uh, she actually had it like printed and folded up in her pocket and handed it to me. I started reading it. Some of them, the ones that had made it to the signs already were highlighted and I was like, can I keep this? <laughs> I, need, I need this because just, you know, I'm a big fan of a concise statement. And when it, uh, as in art, so in life, right? And I think so many of these statements really apply to so many pursuits and hobbies and philosophies. And, you know, I, I mean, an artist may perceive the art of others better than her own. Well, a politician may perceive the politics of others better than her, her own. You know, it's like, it's, it becomes so applicable. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, it really, it mean it, it has so much application in our, our own lives, you know? Like, if you're writing a paper for a class, <laughs> banal ideas yeah. cannot be rescued by beautiful execution, right? Yeah. You know? Yeah. It, it, and it, that's a seed. You just take yeah. that seed and you it's, walk. And it's, it, uh, there, there's so much relevance beyond just art, which I think, you know, proves the designation of conceptual it, it it's extractable it's like, applicable it's, it's it's very funny i cannot imagine seeing seeing this without knowing the work right and so in the the my encounter with sentences on conceptual art is you know the sentences on conceptual art where they're numbered one after another right? yeah so the idea of taking the sentences and individually and then printing them so that they become, uh, in terms of a kind of statement, 
to what you were saying, they become truisms. Yeah. Right. And I never, and even though they are truisms, because I'm reading them as a series of statements and I'm thinking about his work, it downplays the extent to which they're, if you, they're, to which they function as truisms. So you can take them out of the context right. and turn them into a sign. So if I saw a sign that just simply said, numbers are not mathematics, it's like, it's like, that's true. All right. Yeah. <laughs> right. All right. Yeah. All right. Go exactly. on. Yeah. Right. <laughs> numbers are not mathematics. It's like, it's like, that's an interesting thought, right? Yeah. So, take it, yeah. so each one of these signs, yeah. And, it, you know, the, the extent to which they can function on their own, you know, independent. And, and it's a nice spectrum, right? Some of them are more, I want to say, abstract or complex as thoughts. Yeah. And so they're not necessarily all like a kind of, dead on truism, yeah. you know, but as statements, um, and this perhaps has less to do with, I mean, there's the nature of truism, but when confronted with a, a, a statement, I, I think it's, you know, our nature to simply ask ourselves, wait, do I agree with that? True or false? Yeah. Right? You know, so in some sense, and when the, when the thought becomes more complex, then it's like, wait, 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 well, what do you mean by that? phrase <laughs> like, you know yeah. before I can say whether or not I agree or disagree with with you know this statement yeah. so the extent of the statement is a proposition it's also so funny about you know because I, I spun where is it one of these uh the slick art oh, um, yeah it's probably on the back uh, side of one of these uh I spun one of these outside of freeze in 2019 and you know you get the art crowd because they're they're there for it but I was on uh, Orange or like right in the middle of Hollywood. So, you know, it's probably only 30% people going to freeze. The rest of them are people going about their day. And so like that, it was one of the most entertaining sign spinning in all of 15 years because people like see it and they're like, apartments, right? And you're like, no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, this is some really wild esoteric thing that you're gonna have to think about when you go to sleep tonight. Because it's like, you know, there are many elements involved in a work of art and they're just driving and they see it and they're like, that's going to haunt me. Yeah. <laughs> and, and because, you know, when you take it in order, like you're saying, when you take it in order and you see it and you're like, you know that it's for art, you know that it's solid. And you can also compare it to different artist philosophies that you've learned over the years. But, you know, the average person that isn't well versed in those things it's just like this truism that comes out of nowhere, and you're like, that's way too simple to not be true, but what does it mean? Yeah, well, what does it mean? <laughs> exactly. And we are speeding whenever you're ready. Oh, hey. <laughs> Damn. My name is Justin C.M. Brown. I am a sign spinner, the director of training for the Aero Sign Spinner.